It's no secret the big banks can be ruthless when they want their money back. But this story reveals a new low in their breathtaking arrogance. For more than 30 years, Roy Lavis helped build Cairns, helped turn it into the bustling tourist mecca it is today. His construction company also directly and indirectly employed several thousand locals. Roy's business was so prosperous, the Commonwealth Bank threw money at him and encouraged him to expand. In return, he always paid them back on time, principal and interest. Everyone was a winner until the bank changed its mind. From Cairns in tropical North Queensland to the lofty heights of the Commonwealth Bank's Sydney office, a showdown is brewing between a battler businessman, Roy Lavis, and the bank he accuses of shafting his business. The whole nation is being held to ransom by the banks uh, because they are not doing the right thing by small business to grow and prosper. How are you? How are you? Nice to meet you. Have the hot seat, please. From its corner, the Commonwealth Bank denies it's done anything wrong. Did you destroy Roy Lavis's business? That is a view that we completely disagree with. But tonight, what the bank didn't want you to know. We believe that if the Commonwealth Bank hadn't acted the way they did, his business would have survived. The definitive findings of the government's small business ombudsman condemning the bank and backing its victim. Unconscionable conduct is illegal, but the only people who can determine unconscionable conduct is the court. Now, how is Roy or any of these other people who have been hurt going to take a bank on in court? Yeah, like this was the bonus, right. isn't it? At 70, Roy Lavis is a devoted husband, father and grandfather. Oh. In 1977, he started with nothing but a vision and the support of wife Alma. But over three decades, he built up one of Northern Australia's biggest construction businesses, the CEC Group. It's been tough, hasn't it? It's been very tough. What have been the lowest moments? Ah. Uh, what? Watching my family Watching my family go through it. You were the provider, weren't you? That's right. I, I was supposed to pr provide for my family. Roy Lavis helped build this city, from major roads to entire suburbs, even the iconic Cairns Esplanade. There's not a lot of Cairns since 1977 that was built that we didn't have some part of. <laughs> the bloke who built Cairns, yeah. Roy Lavis. Yeah. We were a property developer, we were a civil contractor and we were a construction material business. What's your proudest achievement? The proudest achievement is uh, employing so many people in Cairns. At its height, Roy's CEC group was worth a quarter of a billion dollars, employing 750 locals and listed on the stock exchange. We bought this as a disused cane farm and... Um, In 2007, it went into property development, buying land to build housing estates like this from scratch. You'd put in the curbs and the guttering and the roads and the sewage and the plumbing? Yeah, all that was part of our, our organisation. We, we supplied our own concrete, uh, quarry products, bitumen. It was the beginning of the global financial crisis. But the Commonwealth Bank still enthusiastically supported the business's growth, offering a 60% increase to Roy's business loan to $161 million by the end of 2007. That's a lot of money, Roy. That's right. Were you worried? No. Essentially, that was a vote of confidence in your company, wasn't it, That's by the correct. Commonwealth Bank? They were thinking, this guy's a sure bet. We were putting a million dollars a day into the Cairns economy. 
You were one of their golden boys. That's correct. I was being uh, presented as, as being the company to invest in. But in the space of two months, Roy says everything changed. He says that having approved the additional funds, the bank then backflipped in late February 2008, demanding that Roy more than halve his borrowings in the next eight months. What happened? I don't know. Overnight, they wanted me to go to Brisbane. I went to Brisbane and in a meeting, they said, uh, we want you to reduce debt. So effectively, within a year, they were wanting you to halve your debt. That's correct. But, but Roy, they, they'd offered you the money. They'd practically thrown it at you. That's right. What did they say when you said, look, I'm paying my interest, I'm paying my principal? What did they say to you? They were saying, if we don't reduce, well, we'll <clears throat> a receiver would be brought in. Here in Cairns, what still bewilders Roy Lavis is that through three decades of his company's operations, he never once defaulted on the repayment of his business loans, principal or interest. And for that reason, like most of us would, he thought that meant he'd be safe. He says, though, that what finally pushed him into financial default was the bank's relentless demands that he keep on reducing his debt to the point where he could just no longer pay his bills. To meet Combank's hefty demands, Roy was forced to sell his most lucrative assets, a waste management facility and concrete plant. Cash flow dried up and in May 2011, the receivers were sent in. It just got to a point where the, the payments was squeezing the lifeblood out of the ability for the company to operate. I'm sure I speak for everybody at home. I'm asking why? Why did the bank do this? I think it's quite as simple as the bank decided that uh, construction in North Queensland was risky because there was a number of other cases in the same sort of industry that they wanted to reduce their risk ratios, uh, which reduces the cost of capital, and Roy and others were collateral damage. Is that fair? No or reasonable or ethical. In explosive criticism of Combank, Australia's small business ombudsman, Kate Carnell, describes the bank's treatment of Roy's business as highly unreasonable and potentially unconscionable, which could mean the bank acted illegally. Unconscionable conduct is conduct that I expect we'd all perceive was unethical, um, immoral and wrong. Now the problem comes is that all of those those words I just used are in the eyes of the beholder a bit. So the court system have to determine that the big guy acted really badly and illegally in the space. Do you think the Commonwealth Bank acted really badly against Roy Lavis? Oh, look, I don't think there's any any doubt of this. I mean, this guy was growing his business with the bank right beside him egging him on, encouraging him, saying, you're fantastic, Roy. And literally, within weeks, they changed the, the goalposts. And that's so unfair. You proud of what you've done here, Roy? Oh, very proud. Battler businessman Roy Lavis used to run one of Far North Queensland's most successful construction companies, the CEC Group. And this is all yours? We, we did all the work here, yeah. yeah. The business collapsed in 2011, and Australia's small business ombudsman has now found that, if not for the actions of the Commonwealth Bank, Roy's company would be thriving today. Well, it's perplexing to us as to how the small business ombudsman could come to these views, because they don't marry at all with the facts. The Commonwealth Bank is so defiant it did nothing wrong, its chief risk officer, David Cohen, is speaking out to publicly defend his bank. The small business ombudsman says, were it not for the actions of the Commonwealth Bank, Roy Lavis' business would have survived. She flatly accuses you of destroying Roy's business. It raises real questions as to whether the small businessman's business ombudsman's office actually has the skills and the knowledge and the understanding to look at a case like this. The fact of the matter is that if it was not for Commonwealth Bank, 
CEC would not have survived for as long as it did. All these years later, the bank now claims its crippling debt reduction was actually the idea of Roy Lavis and the CEC group all along. It was not Commonwealth Bank telling CEC that it needed to reduce debt. In fact, it was the reverse. CEC came to Commonwealth Bank in December 2007 saying, with, with respect, we need to... We need respect, to David, that's not correct. I, nobody's saying that. The chairman of the, com the, co the company at the time, uh, Roy Lavis, the chief executive, they say in mid-February 2008, you did a complete backflip on an agreement to provide a $160 million loan facility and pulled the pin on that, insisting on a dramatic reduction in debt. Well, that is simply not true. But Ombudsman Kate Carnell is backing Roy Lavis and CEC's version of events. There is nothing in any of the significant amounts of documents we've looked at to indicate that Roy didn't have the capacity to continue to trade. So let me be clear about this. You believe that the Commonwealth Bank shut Roy Lavis down for no good reason? I think that by doing what they did to Roy, remember, requiring him to pay back money in really short periods of time with no real evidence on why this needed to happen, um, this caused a scenario where Roy's business went into de to decline and went into liquidation. When Roy Lavis's company was wiped out in 2011, it impacted an entire region. 750 locals lost their jobs and thousands more subcontractors and mum and dad shareholders made huge losses. When it happened, was it hard for you to walk the street here in Cairns? Oh, definitely, because, you know, I've failed people who I employed, the people who I was doing business with, the subbies, suppliers, the people that I encouraged to invest in our company. Local Federal MP Warren Inch was on the board of CEC. From, from what happened to Roy, it's outrage. I mean, when he says the company collapsed under the weight of Combank's demands. They were just focusing on exiting this region and they were going to create an excuse to do it come hell or high water and that's exactly what they done. And you blame the bank? Oh, it was totally engineered by the banks. There's no question about it. That's one hell of an allegation though, Warren. It's a fact. The bank says it's done nothing wrong. Let me tell you, these agreements that the banks get you to sign, they could take you out to the back of the shed and shoot you, literally shoot you, and they could argue successfully that it's within their terms of agreement. I mean, it is so much one-sided. There is nothing that the banks could not do that they couldn't argue they're doing legally because it's in the terms, because it's within the terms of agreement. When I started in this process for this banking inquiry, I believed that, you know, that there'd be two sides to every story. I believed that, you know, that banks wouldn't operate this way. I just believed that. And it was just the, the more we got into these stories like Roy's, the more I realised people really were treated unfairly and really were hurt um, and really do need to have some justice. Well, Combank is our biggest bank. It has, a, I think, an obligation, a moral obligation to, you know, to, to settle with people like Roy. Both Kate Carnell and Warren Inch are backing calls for a bank tribunal with the power to investigate cases like Roy's and to levy penalties against bad banks. The banks do need to be held to account and if we can't do that with a tribunal, then the only other option is a Royal Commission. Something tells me, David, this is going to end up in the banking tribunal. They want Roy Lavis's case to be test case number one. Are you worried about that? We are very happy to appear before any tribunal. So just to be clear, Commonwealth Bank made no mistakes in Roy Lavis's case. Commonwealth Bank supported CEC for three and a half years to enable it to survive. We sought to work with CEC to help it survive. Did you make any mistakes? We continued to support CEC throughout the three and a half years. For Roy, his battle with the Commonwealth Bank is far from over. If nothing else, he's determined to keep fighting for change 
so that no other Australian business suffers the same fate. The whole nation is being held to ransom by the banks until that stops. As a nation, we're going nowhere. If you had the opportunity to, to steer down the men... I'd love to. What would you say to them? I'd say, you bastards. Look what you did to so many people in Cairns and the whole Cairns community. And what are you doing to the rest of the people in Australia? You know, the story's there every day of bank bastardry. Does Combank accept that it made any mistakes in Roy Lavis's case? In the case of CEC, this a large publicly listed company, we worked very closely with them. Um, CEC, to its credit, recognised the financial difficulty that it was in and it did come up with a plan in December 2007 to try and avoid the difficulty. With CEC respect, came though, to David, the, the plan, the proposed debt reductions that, that CEC was talking about in December bear no resemblance to the debt reductions, the, the huge reduction in loan borrowings that you were insisting they do in late February. And that's completely incorrect. The true facts, and they may be different from what you have been told, but the true facts are that the board of CEC came up with a plan in December 2007 CEC came up with its own plan to reduce debt. It came to Commonwealth Bank and presented that plan. The people who presented that plan to Commonwealth Bank were Roy Lavis, Rob Borbich and Greg Kern, three of the senior directors but of that company. they weren't proposing a slash to $65 million. They weren't proposing a they $100 proposed, million dollar cut, were they, they on proposed, the moment? In fact, what they proposed, Ross, was a cut from $169 million to $120 million and they embarked on a strategy of asset sales to and produce that. And that's exactly what Roy Lavis did. He fulfilled that request. And he then, sold properties and achieved the reductions that you demanded. And even after you, he'd done that, you hit him with another request. And then CEC formed a view that having got to $120 million of debt, CEC itself, not Commonwealth Bank, formed the view that its sustainable level of debt was in the region of 70 to $75 million. This was not Commonwealth Bank imposing that target on CEC, it was CEC forming a view itself, taking into account business conditions at the time, taking into account its financial situation. So CEC actually came up with the notion of how much debt it should... The criticism from the Commonwealth side, the Ombudsman, is that you insisted on a debt reduction that was completely unrealistic, that ended up crippling Roy's company. That's a contention that we don't agree with at all. It's surprising to us that the small business ombudsman can come to a view like that in the context of a very large, complex listed company. A lot of your advertising is that you're with the customer through good and bad, through thick and thin. You're there during the tough times and there during the good times. Why did you abandon Roy when things got a little bit bad? during the global financial crisis, which hit every business in but Australia. The global financial crisis had a big impact. In fact, the Australian Bureau of Statistics has showed that around about 27% of Queensland businesses failed during the two years from June 2007. Commonwealth Bank supported CEC for three and a half years as it sought to survive. Do you, do you accept that there's a public mood out there that the banks need to be held more to account and that's why there's calls for a tribunal or a royal commission. Why do you think banks have got such a bad name right now? We understand that when financial circumstances turn sour, whether it be for an individual or for a company, that naturally people get upset and naturally people look for reasons why that could have occurred. In the case of CEC, Although there are claims that the bank brought about the demise, in fact, the opposite is the case. So you're the victim here, not Roy. Commonwealth Bank lost $60 million. CEC shareholders lost a lot of money. CEC shareholders who had supported the company for a long period of time, including Roy Lavis, lost a lot of money. Commonwealth Bank lost $60 million. 